everyone. Welcome to our channel. I'm Nadia and today Rob is behind the camera. Hey everybody. <laughs> we like to switch things up sometimes. Either it's him or it's me, but we're still working together. And in this one, we are actually going to be talking about broth, stocks, whatever. The, oh yeah. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the golden liquid provides all kinds of flavors into whatever you make, whether it's soups, stews, or risotto if you want to. And what brought this inspiration on is that a few weeks ago, Rob actually had an operation um, in his esophagus, and as a result, he's on a very much soft food diet. The video previously where we remarked that we hit 1,000 subscribers, all thanks to you guys, was actually recorded a week prior to his surgery just to make sure that we could get it done in time. So, being on a soft food diet for a little bit because recovery is going to be a bit slow for Rob, understandably so, we've had to look into how we can make food that's tasty um, so that he can actually enjoy it and I can actually enjoy it and we don't get bored of it. And it's a good thing that we both can cook because we've been able to come up with some interesting things. But the primary um, provider of flavor and the liquidy aspect has been broth. Now we do make stock from scratch from time to time, but sometimes you just don't have the time to do it. It takes quite a bit of time, quite a bit of product and quite a bit of simmering. In this case, because we want to be able to have meals throughout the day where it's liquid based, we bought <laughs> we bought stock. Bought out the shelves. We did. And Ah. Rob's mom is amazing. She made this. Well, no, not this. She made containers. We have containers in the freezer as well. Rob's mom makes the best, I think, best matzo ball soup in the world. And for matzo ball soup, you need chicken stock. And she makes that from scratch as well. So she made bucket loads for Rob and dropped it off. Interestingly enough, just so you know, she uses whole chickens to yeah. make the chicken soup. Does she ever use chicken feet? Do you know? No, she doesn't know. add chicken feet because she's not really, she's cooking a soup, yeah. not a stocks, but she uses the whole chicken yeah. and cooks that and that gives the chicken soup. Does she use kosher chicken? Like where it's salted yes, chicken? Yes, she does. Yeah, which makes a whole world of difference when it comes to actually deepening the flavor of this stock where I don't think she actually adds any salt because she's getting kosher chicken. Probably adds some, but not much. Can you explain what kosher chicken is? <laughs> I think it's important for people to know yes. who may not be uh, aware. Kosher chicken is chicken that has number one, mm. I'm not sure what the raising laws are, but I know that the slaughtering laws would be very specific. You, the chicken would have to be hung upside down, its throat slit by a certified... Um, Rabbi? It's not a rabbi. Oh, you put me on the spot. I don't remember the Hebrew word for the person who does the slaughtering, but he's, he's a highly specialized person who works with very, very sharp knives to cut the throat. It's done under the supervision of a rabbi. Mm -hmm. um, and then the animal is bled out. This, uh, this applies to pigs and chickens. Mm -hmm. um, and then I believe the I don't think kosher, they're kosher though. I didn't say pigs, did I? You did. Oh, did I? Oops. <laughs> How to make kosher bacon. <laughs> it's like making halal bacon. <laughs> I meant beef and chicken and goat, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so it has to be hung out, and then I believe it has to be salted to remove any remains of blood or anything. And I think that is the first step of getting really great chicken to make this wonderful stock that your mom makes. Yes. I, I love this. She makes the best matzo it ball is soup. Too. Yep. So okay. she dropped off bucket loads of this, but this came after at first when Rob had his surgery and he got home and he was allowed to have some sort of food again because you weren't even allowed to have liquid for about a day or so, two mm. days I think. No liquid. I can't remember. Yeah, in the hospital. In the hospital. But then when I got home, it was liquid diet. Yeah. So when I went to pick up Rob from the hospital, we stopped by <laughs> grocery store and we just raided it got whatever we could. And that led down to what is stock when you buy it in a grocery store? Because when you go to buy stock in a grocery store, there's a lot of different options. There are stock cubes, there are, which I didn't know existed, um, concentrated 
where you then just, it's basically a liquid form of a stock cube when you think about it. There's this wonderful little thing that I actually always keep one in the fridge. I keep the mushroom variety. This is the vegetable stock variety where it's more like a paste. You add What's it into water. Name? This is better than bouillon. Better than bouillon. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's more of a paste consistency. You add it into water and you simmer away. And then of course, what everybody's familiar with are the boxed varieties of stock and broth that are ready to use immediately. I have two different brands here. We didn't go and buy out 50 different brands because, well, we only have so much budget to do yeah. stuff like that. But I got the Campbell brand, which everybody is very familiar with because they've been around for a long time. And I got this brand that we just started seeing recently. This is a Quebec brand. No, sorry. Yeah. This is a Canadian brand based in Quebec, run by two guys who are of Greek descent and Elios, which is Greek for sun which is quite nice. They actually make other food items as well. And we are going to be doing taste testing. <laughs> I'm not really looking forward to the stock cube part because I, I grew up I haven't stock bought cube. a bouillon cube in decades. Yeah, I'm not a fan of them. I remember having to use them sometimes, uh, or not me, my mom would use it in cooking, and that was the best option at that point to get available stock, and I just never I remember in the 70s, people using them with sour cream to make yeah. uh, dips. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's a thing? Yeah. Does it still happen? Well, maybe. <laughs> well, the interesting... And you know, but you know what? Don't, don't be a total <laughs> snob, because we have seen competitive chefs yeah. on TV grabbing bouillon cubes and crushing them up into sauces just to, you know, step up the flavor. So yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's just, it's not me being a snob. There's this particular taste that I'm not a fan of. I find them to be one, overly salty, and two, there is this lingering flavor that stays in my tongue that I just kind of want to scratch off. It's really weird for yeah, me. Yeah, the taste of a chemistry lab. That must be it. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, we're now seeing these kinds of things where it's uh, Go Bio, where it's organic based stock cubes. So who knows what the taste is going to be like. So we figured the best way to know the differences, one is to list out the ingredients and see what they really are and what they really mean without instilling fear in people and actually see if there's any flavor note differences. And one thing we did notice when we were shopping yeah. is that the ingredients list on all of the stocks and bullions has become much cleaner, a yeah. lot less chemistry, more simple ingredients Which right across the board. Kind of sucks because I wanted to get a stock box that we, we saw before. This is the reason we were making stock at home. We were seeing ingredients that just we felt didn't really belong in the stock. Because when you think about it, stock is just the stock main is just meat or bone cooked. Yeah, you ex extract flavor from them. That's all you're doing. But even Campbell's, I have to admit, has gotten better with their ingredient list. So, so you're going to tell us? To flavor. What's well, in? let's go over the ingredients Well, Johnny, first. tell us what's inside. <laughs> um, so the one thing that we always like to do, and I, I find a lot of people would like to do this as well, is read through the ingredients list and do comparisons so you can decide, aside from price, what product you want to get. And a couple of the ingredients were quite interesting when you go, just if you even look at stock cubes, you have... This is the North Swiss chicken stock? Yeah. No, this is the mushroom. We decided oh, okay. to get mushroom because mushroom. we have the better right. bouillon, so we'll do a comparison. But for mushroom, we have salt, modified palm oil, monosodium glutamate, which is MSG, sugar, onion powder, water, mushroom powder, caramel, disodium guanylate, 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 whatever. I'll spell it out. <laughs> disodium inosinate, corn maltodextrin, north and artificial flavor, no, sorry, not north, natural and artificial flavor, celery seed, shea butter, sal butter, and I have no idea what sal butter is, palm oil and citric acid, and may contain wheat. I guess the wheat would be there for the binding agent. For the Go Bio, we have non-GMO cornstarch, mineral starch, hydrogen palm oil, onion, parsnip, parsley, lovage, oregano, rosemary, yeast extract, turmeric, mace, garlic. That's pretty good that for stocking. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Any vegetables? I guess the carrot, leek, parsnip, parsley, <laughs> love it, yeah. it, all those. But no, um, I want to make a note of this. No sugar yes. in this one. 
Now this brand, this is the other Nor brand, where um, Nor selects. I wonder what that means. Oh, it means no it's good added, stuff. Yeah, it means no added MSG. Ah. Yeah. The the great MSG square s scare. It, it's interesting. They say no added MSG. Yeast extract naturally contains glutamates. Yeah, let's, let's just read through the ingredients. We're going to go over what some of these things mean. So salt, modified palm oil, cornstarch, yeast extract, dried vegetables, which contain uh, onion, carrot, garlic, sugar, hydrogenated palm oil, water, dried chicken stock, dried parsley, spices, silicon dioxide, rosemary extract. Interesting. That's interesting. very interesting. There's, par there's hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated palm oil in everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they say non-hydrogenated -hydro palm oil, but... It's still, it's, it's a still, lot of palm oil. Yeah, it's a lot of palm oil. Now, of course, uh, you have to understand the ranking system and ingredient listing. Whatever is listed first is the most amount in that product. And then it goes down from there in terms of percentage. Now, if we look at liquid-based stock, they obviously will have some different ingredients because of its um, properties of being liquid versus solid. So in this concentrated one, we have chicken broth, which is water and chicken stock. They listed that specifically. Yeast extract, salt, sugars, mainly being dextrose, canola or soybean oil, sunflower oil, carnauba wax, and natural flavor. Keep the carnauba wax which in means mind. This one will keep your car shiny. <laughs> Now, um, here's where it gets interesting because I was really, really hoping that the Campbell's one would... I mean, in the past when we looked at ingredients on the Campbell's stock, it was a little bit weird. We found it really odd and very salty. So the Campbell's one is chicken broth, water chicken stock, natural flavor, yeast extract, sugars dextrose, chicken fat, canola or soybean oil. Not half bad. Not half bad. Less than the uh, concentrated one. And then the Elios. Now I'm going to grab the chicken one for the Elios so we can do a proper comparison. It's long. Get comfortable. Why if we... they'd left off all the organics, they could have made the package half the size. But why list salt twice? Sea salt and then salt. Maybe they're considered separate ingredients. But what is organic flavor? It just tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are words in these, or there are words in these ingredients that may make some people go, what the hell? It made me go, hmm, I wonder what they really mean because they're obviously allowed in the food, which means they're uh, safe to consume to a degree. We believe everything in life to be in moderate. So if you're going to be consuming everything or anything, just consume in moderation. You don't need to overdo it. Of course, if your body is feeling weird about it, then just stop eating it. This is chicken. Grandma Davidson is just chicken. <laughs> does she add any onions or carrots? Yeah, she does. She starts with a mirepoix yeah. of carrots, celery, and onions. Yeah. Sweat it down. And then in goes a whole chicken and water and it just cooks and she skims constantly. Do you she, know if she roasts the chicken ahead of time? No, she does. I don't believe she does. I don't think so either. That would be more work than, than is needed. I mean, but she does make a point of, you know, every like half an hour, hour, she lifts, lifts the top, skims off any like scum on the top. So it stays nice and clear. I mean, when I have her matzo ball soup, the broth looks like consomme. Yeah. And I know she hasn't created a raft to get all the impurities out. She's really good and very patient. <laughs> now, some of the ingredients. Let's talk about let's talk about MSG and yeast extract. MSG. Monosodium glutamate. We have it. We're not afraid of it. it doesn't harm us in any way. <laughs> It's the king of flavor. It's, we, we did label it, but I need to change the label to black lettering. I mean, it's just a flavor enhancer. Don't take it on its own. But we have it. We're not afraid of it. Just use it in moderation. It is a different flavor from salt. Absolutely. You know, it is actually <clears throat> listed as a food flavor enhancer when you're looking for MSG. It may not pop up as MSG. Yeast extract 
is also a flavor enhancer. Both yeast extract and MSG are the umami flavor providers in these um, stock varieties and whatever. And they both they contain are. glutamate. They both contain glutamate. The only time that you want to be considering something is that where on the list of ingredients does MSG come up on? Because that will also be the determinant factor of how much salt is going into something. In the case of the Knorr or Knorr, I, I think, is it Knorr or Knorr? I'm not sure. I'm going to say Knorr. I've always said Knorr. Yeah. In the mushroom one, and I'm pretty sure the same goes for the vegetables, so can, uh, vegetable, chicken, and beef, my MSG pops up third on the ingredient list. So that means your salt intake is going to be actually a lot higher. And the salt on this is, where are you at, sodium? 43% of in your daily. A, in the half cube. In a half cube. That's your half, half a day's salt in half a cube. Yeah, so a full cube will give you 86%. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what you need to be mindful of. Where on the list is MSG or even yeast extract is sitting. I mean, yeast extract is also Marmite, yes. Vegemite, same thing. Those are both flavor enhancers as well. I've never had it on the toast. I don't know what it would taste like. <laughs> I feel like it's an acquired taste, but those are the same things. Are they harmful? Depends on how much you ingest. Listen to your body. I don't think it's harmful, but is salt harmful? Is sugar harmful? You know, those are the questions that need to be considered when you're ingesting something rather than being afraid of it. Understand what it is, what it's providing and where it's sitting and how much you're going to be consuming of it. So that's MSG and yeast extract. The one thing I was um, really curious about, I kept seeing, especially for beef, which is also, I think, in Better Than Bouillon. We did not go over the ingredients list for the Better Than Bouillon, but we can go over it now. Beef for Better Than Bouillon is roasted beef, salt, cane sugar, maltodextrin, garlic powder, yeast extract, celery juice concentrate, cornstarch, onion powder, caramel color, natural flavor, and then organic. <laughs> That's it, just it's organic. What I... What, what we were finding interesting is that we kept seeing either cane sugar or caramelized syrup or both in a lot of the stock, mainly beef. If you look at a lot of the beef stock, no matter what the brand name is, you will see either cane sugar or caramelized syrup or both. So what is caramelized syrup? It's a colorant. It's a sugary colorant. That's what gives that the roast beef beef stock color is the caramelized syrup. You won't see it in chicken. You won't see it in vegetable stock or even in the mushroom one, only in the roast beef. What does that mean though? It does mean your sugar intake does go up a bit, as opposed to if you're using chicken or vegetable stock. But that's all caramelized syrup is. It's just sugar in a nice, beautiful color. <laughs> and if you look at the sugar listings, in the roast beef one versus the vegetable one, in the roast beef one, it says one gram of sugar per one teaspoon, which is one, six grams of teaspoon. In the vegetable one, sugar isn't even listed on the NFT table mm -hmm. because they don't have the caramelized syrup. Interesting. I found that fascinating. I think we'll just make roast beef or beef stock at home. The only beef stock that we've been using right now is the brand name Ilios because... It's actually quite tasty, and I don't oh, think there's any... unexpectedly tasty. I don't think there's any sh caramelized sugar in it. Yeah, we have an open box here of the beef one, and the ingredients are organic beef, water concentrated organic beef broth, sea salt, organic beef fat, organic caramel color. There you go. What makes it organic? I well, guess where they get the sugar from? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The sugar on this is 0% for 250 mil. It's so small that they have to list the sugar because the caramel is listed in the ingredients, but it's so small in, in quantity per 250 mil that it's at 0%. Yay. Yeah. Admirable. Stuff is good. Stuff is very good. And it actually tastes like beef, not other stuff. Aside from caramelized syrup, I mean, you do have cane sugar, which doesn't, may or may not act as a colorant. It's there of what they would determine, I guess, a healthier form of sugar. And then you have dextrose as well. So 
almost all of them have some form of sugar in it, except for this vegetable better than bouillon, which I was quite impressed with. So those are sugars, and I guess you just need to watch out for where on the rankings of ingredients list the sugar is sitting, because that'll determine not just your salt intake, intake, but your sugar intake as well. Now the more interesting bit, which made me go, is my car really gonna be waxed beautifully? Carnova wax. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it only showed up in these concentrated ones. What is Carnova wax? Carnova wax is a thickener. Oh. Yeah, it is actually a wax. You know how there's beeswax in solid form? There is an actual solid form of Carnova wax. Yeah. And at a certain, on a certain percentage, it is safe to digest. So go, go and lick your shiny car. To a degree, because if you go <laughs> too much of it, then obviously, I mean, the body actually doesn't absorb any of it. It goes right through the system. So your body won't absorb any of it, but of course, just like any of everything else, you don't want to consume too much of it. But that's why there's Carnova wax in here it as opposed to- makes you wonder, to, like, why use Carnuba wax? And not guar gum. Or remember anything else, gum yeah. Or xanthan gum. Guar gum is also something you might see in one of the lists. None of, it's not in any of these ones, but we've seen them before. Guar gum is also a thickener, but I think Carnoba wax, the, the main trait of the Carnoba wax is that it prevents foaming in the broth. <laughs> Foam, foaming or bubbling, whereas guar gum, if there's any foaming in the broth, it would just keep going. It's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I think after this we won't be getting these again. We don't need it. Well, well we've got to taste them. See, maybe they're amazing. Yeah, maybe. But once you're all healed, we won't be needing this much at all. <laughs> no. We've stocked for months. Now, one of the... One of the... Stock cubes kind of stumped me. It was a stock... Yeah, this one here. Silicon dioxide. I mean, if you hear anything silicon, you may... You go, we're... We're allowed to eat this stuff? What is it? Isn't it plastic? In this case, no, it's not. Silicon dioxide actually gets used a lot in baked goods as well. So next time you're buying cookies or anything, or even cake, take a look, or cake powder mostly. What it does is that it prevents the powder from caking or clumping up. It keeps it in its fine form, and it also allows water to be absorbed a lot more efficiently into each granule. That's what silicon dioxide is. So it is safe to consume. FDA and also the Canadian board has said that it's safe to consume, but it's just, it's interesting what's required to maintain a shape of something like this. Yeah. Those are the ingredients that I wanted to go over because I thought, you know, it's so weird that we see them in other goods as well, but I've never really questioned it. And since we've had to get so much broth, we decided to, you know, make a video because we need to make content, purchase all the different varieties and try them out and after this, I will never be getting stock cubes. Even if they taste good, I'm just, I'm not a stock cube person. I'm happy to have broth around. So Rob, shall we? Let's do it. Let's get to tasting. We're gonna make this really simple. Everything's gonna be heated in the microwave. So for this tasting purpose, to keep everything consistent, we are gonna be only tasting stuff with chicken flavor in it. And these all, have some form of chicken in it. So this is what we'll be tasting. I think for the stock cube, I'll just put maybe, what's the direction on this thing? Hmm. Hello, direction, preparation. Dissolve one cube in three cups of hot boiling water. I think I'll just do maybe just a little bit and put it in a glass and just microwave it. Sure. Yeah, um, mm, my favorite stock cube. Let's do this thing. Get little glasses. Mmm, stock cube. So excited. Do you want to cut it into like an eighth or something? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you want me to cut it? Sure. Interesting smell. That one's quite soft. Mm. But just guess, in terms of dividing it up to get the correct. Yeah, this one. Oh yeah, this, this is the one that I'm familiar with. Quarters. For 
precision cutting. Do something, do it right. Mm -hmm. So what's the, what was the total amount for a cube? A cube, three cups of water. Which is 750, so for an eighth, about... Uh, and that's about half a cup of 100, water. 125 ml of uh, water. And this one? The smell on the Go Bio one is actually not that bad when you first open it. It, it actually does smell quite a bit like chicken. The, the smell on the Knorr one, and I think it's more so for me, I have always associated with salt. That's the first thing I smell, the salt. All right, oh, don't want to keep that near me. You know which is which? Yep. Mm, 30 seconds. And do you want to make up the, the jar one? Dissolve one teaspoon to 250 mils of boiling water. So we're so only going to do one, like... one cup. Yeah. Oh, this one smells like chicken, for sure. Well, do you recall baby food when you were feeding Jesse? Yeah. Did you ever feed him something with the chicken in it? We didn't really use much baby food. This smells like chicken baby food. So we have our chicken stock from Stock Cubes and from Better Than Bouillon. Interesting, very interesting. The, the chicken stock from Knorr, which had the silicon dioxide, the, the reason for that ingredient is to help in allowing the solid to absorb the water so it dissolves a lot more nicely and in um, more consistency. But there are clumps of stuff in here that are not dissolving. <laughs> at all. And I don't know, maybe if it was introduced with a higher heat source, like if you're putting it in a stew or something, it may dissolve better, but right now it's quite clumpy. In the meantime, the GoBio one that does not have silicon dioxide in it, has other acclaimed organic ingredients, has dissolved perfectly into the water. Very easily. Very easily. There was barely any fight. There's just more and more clumps forming in the, in the Knorr one with the silicon dioxide. Interesting. The better than bouillon looks like what a stock should look like. It's not a consomme by any means, but it's nicely blended. A lot more so than the GoBio one. Whereas this one, less so, in the middle, and really nicely done. It's very interesting. <clears throat> and for the purpose of science and for the purpose of this video, it's time to taste stock cube. Stock cube stock. Mm. Let's go with the Knorr one. Does anybody remember Lipton chicken soup with the little noodles? <laughs> that's exactly what it that's exactly what it tastes like. It it's very salt forward for me, and the little clumps are not all that pleasant. They don't have a significant crunchy texture, but I do feel it on my tongue. Um, something that I'm just not really wanting to taste or feel in my mouth. But it's very salt forward and you do get the chicken flavor in there. Now this is the GoBio one. Interesting. We put in roughly the same amount of stock and water into both of these glasses, but this tastes more watery, less concentrated not so very salt forward. I can actually taste some of the lovage and the parsley in there, which was listed. Is lovage in this one? Yeah, I can actually taste the lovage. Lovage is another form of celery in terms of now, flavor. Now you're making me curious. It's a lot more pleasant, but it's definitely more watery. You get more it celery almost tastes, It almost tastes more like a vegetable stock than a chicken stock. Yes, it does. It, I'm, I'm tasting all of the other vegetables in there, which I wasn't sure. It's actually we quite pleasant. Do you want the Knorr one? No. <laughs> yes. I don't blame you. <laughs> Offer me snot-filled <laughs> bouillon. Yum. Mm, that's exactly what it was in my mouth. <laughs> all right. Better than bouillon. Sodium, 30%. Yeah. This, 
This actually has less sodium. The Knorr chicken one has 27% sodium. The Better Than Bouillon has 30%, which obviously means that if you're gonna be using Better Than Bouillon, I believe they do make no salted ones as well. Just watch your salting when you're salting the soup and stew. Aside from the salt, which is very forward in note, it is a lot more pleasant and there's actually a nice mouth feel. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, this one, this one's a winner for me. You do taste the chicken, but there are other notes in there that are kind of, mm. right? And there's a nice mouth feel. Oh, that tastes like chicken broth. Without yeah. putting the hours into it. Wow. That, that tastes does taste like, good. That's that, not bad. Yeah, that's, that's close to, we'll, be, we'll also be tasting Grandma Davidson stock. Now, what's nice about the better than bouillon is you can just stash it in your fridge. Yeah. Keeps for a long, long time. It does. So anytime you need a broth or a flavor or something to punch up a dish, at least you've got something. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I can easily. That's quite nice. Yeah. That's good. That has a nice chicken taste. Mmm, chickeny in a good way. All right. That has a bit of a funky smell. Mmm, funky. And did you want me to fill cups with these? Sure, I rinsed them out. Okay, give them a little. Once we've tasted them all, just taste the Helios beef. Beef and we should we definitely oh, yeah. need to yeah. taste your mom's. Helios Campbell's. Okay. Do you know which is which? Yep. Okay, we have this is the Campbell's concentrated one chicken stock. This is the Campbell's straight out of the box chicken stock. This is the Elio's chicken stock and this is Grandma David's chicken stock. My ultimate favorite. So let's try. Hmm. It's in here. Does it have the caramel in it? No, but I'm, I'm smelling sugar and I'm tasting sugar. It does have dextrose in it. That's but sugar. It's on one, two, it's three. It's on fifth of the list. Dextrose is very sweet. It is very sweet. And it has, it smells a bit like apple juice. It's not bad, but it's, I'm smelling apple juice first and then I smell chicken. <laughs> Maybe the chickens ate apples. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. I have to get rid of the sugar. This smells like the chicken Lipton soup stock. It's perfectly decent chicken stock. Does not taste like or smell like apples. And that's the regular boxed Campbell's. Yeah, it is um, quite weak in taste. It's more watery than more of a rich stock. The balance of salt is fine actually compared to what we are accustomed to having Campbell's soup from before where they were known to be quite salty. So they've uh, tempered that quite a bit in this one, which I'm quite pleased with. This is the Elio's chicken stock and it has more of a chicken smell to it. Completely different flavor from the Campbell's. <laughs> you want to try? It's completely different. I'm not even tasting any chicken. This is like the, um, like the stock cube we tried where it was more vegetable than chicken. So there's the Bass Campbell's. Campbell's. Tastes like cafeteria chicken soup. Yeah, where it's kind of weak in flavor. Yeah. No chicken. No. <laughs> There's this, it says there's chicken in here. Yeah. I'm tasting other stuff. There's very actually- Very watery. There's vegetable hints, but not really very much. Now there is potato flour in here, but the potato flour is not so much for the flavor, but more for the thickening aspect. That's a little disappointing. Yeah, it's actually- Hmm. It'll still be good to use, probably- Not much at all. It has a little tang to it, but- it's more like a Not vegetable much stock. chicken flavor, yeah. Yeah. If you were expecting chicken, it just doesn't have the chicken flavor. That's all it is, but it's still perfectly delicious stock. <laughs> this is, this is Grandma Davidson stock. 
Smells like chicken. Oh, it's so good. Her broth is so good that you can just warm up a glass of it and have it like that. It is delicious. It is chicken forward, has a great balance of salt, no potato flour or guargum or carnauba wax. It's thickened on its own. It has a great mouth feel to it and you get the other celery and carrot notes in there just to balance everything out. It's very good. I was a lucky boy. So lucky. My mom makes the best curry dishes in the world and Rob's mom makes the best matzo ball soup in the world and other Jewish dishes as well. Other dishes in general. Now we were curious about, this is what I'd be normally keep in the fridge. This is the more expensive of the better bouillon lines. So this is the mushroom based one. I like keeping this around because I only use a little bit in certain dishes for more of an umami kick. And then we have the Knorr mushroom cube. And you know how much I love stock cube. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna taste the two and see in comparison what they're like. I am smelling quite a bit of mushroom. This one obviously has dissolved quite nicely. This took is the, a little bit to dissolve it though. Hmm. And this is the better than bouillon and it has chunks of, I'm pretty sure they're mushrooms. The ingredients in here, first, first list on the ingredient is mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the chunks of mushrooms. Yeah, because mushroom doesn't dissolve. That's not what its properties are. Um, I'm smelling quite a bit of mushroom. And when I opened the stock cube, the first thing it hit me with was the mushroom smell. The cube one definitely has more of a mushroom smell in stock form now, and I'm not smelling any mushroom in this one. But again, I'm imagining that this is more just of a glutamate of sorts for, in a, for a umami hit. Stock cube. If mushroom could taste artificial, <laughs> how? <laughs> I don't get it. You know when you open a pack of raw mushrooms, like cremini mushrooms that you get in a grocery store and there's a distinct mushroom smell where it has a hint of metallic note at the end? Mind you, my nose is very sensitive and I can pick up these sort of weird things. Um, that's what this one tastes like. <laughs> it has a mushroom, an artificial mushroom taste that has a metallic note. And I don't know why. It could be of the ingredients in here that I don't know what half of them are. I mean, mushroom is listed one, two, three. It's listed eighth on the ingredient list. <laughs> and it's not even mushroom, it's mushroom powder. So who knows what that powder even contains before it arrived here, because it doesn't list it as concentrated powder, it just says mushroom powder. Words have power. Or powder. So there's something of a mushroom taste in here, but I think they've worked hard on getting the mushroom flavor rather than it being more of an umami hit. On the other hand, the better than bouillon, I am actually enjoying this one. This I can drink on its own. This tastes like just an umami hit. It's just, it's salty, but it's not unpleasant. There's actually a mouth feel and this tastes really good. <laughs> it is also the more expensive out of all of their better than bouillon lines, but it's worth having. I tend to add about a teaspoon or so and if I'm cooking something, just, you know, this is my yeast extract, so to speak. And if you want to think about it that way, but this is great. Okay, now. <clears throat> Rob wants to try the Let's have one. a treat. Yeah. Okay. This is the Elio, Elios, Elios. Mm -hmm. Beef broth. Mm -hmm. We're just going to do it this way. That I've been just sort of living on for the last two weeks. You don't want to heat it up or anything? Try it at room temp. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. I can see how this is soothing for your esophagus. Oh my God. It's got just enough gelatin to sort of coat the tongue mm -hmm. and beautiful like umami flavor. It tastes, it tastes like 
I, it tastes like a beef stew smells. So with Rob, Rob's surgery, they actually cut a piece out of the esophagus. So um, drinking something like this cool it has oh, been really been helping wonderful. him. Which is the reason why Rob hasn't tasted everything with him today. It's, <laughs> we had a bit of behind the scenes where he had a bit of a difficulty swallowing, but it's on it the will get better and this will help. Yeah, it's on the road to recovery. That's actually really good mm -hmm. roast beef. And warmed up a little bit. It's absolutely delicious. But even just at room temperature, that is very good. Yeah, that is very good. I'm surprised. Yeah. Of all of the flavors that we've tried, yeah. my mom's and the Elios beef is the best. Yeah, I was surprised by the Elios chicken one. Yeah. Or chicken, no chicken. Chicken. Yeah. So, <clears throat> two champions, one homemade. Mm -hmm. One boxed, both taste really, really excellent. And I'm actually enjoying this mushroom one from Better Than Bouillon. It's a great little umami hit. It's delicious. It's actually, it's, it is more of a cooking ingredient. Yes, that's exactly what, rather than being the main um, star ingredient for flavor. It's delicious. So, one point of, of clarification. We've been sort of randomly talking about bouillon, broth, and stock. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they're they, different. They're they are different. actually, well, I think bouillon and broth are the same thing. Just bouillon is broth in French. Yeah. Um, but stock should be a more concentrated form because a stock is reduced much more substantially um, along the way to becoming a jelly form. So these are all pretty much Broth. bouillons and broths yeah. as opposed to a stock. And sometimes we buy stock from our butcher and it, it comes in a container like this and it's a real gel. Like your mom's is yeah, that's it's got very gelatin jelly. In. So there, therein lies the difference. The gelatin's coming from the chicken. She didn't add yeah. anything else, but she really concentrated it down. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's those true. are our favorites. Mm -hmm. And um, if you need a flavor enhancer, it's just really convenient to have this stuff around. And for now, because our diet is mainly liquid and soft food based, <laughs> this has is. been, this is, well, we're doing it together. <laughs> this has been um, a lifesaver. It can get pricey, so be mindful that like this costs more than this one here. So those are things to keep in mind. But for, if you're looking for a quick meal to make without having to spend hours on making broth, sometimes it's just great to go buy Good one. Good stuff. This we found at Farm Boy here in Toronto. Um, I did not see this anywhere else. I don't know if Loblaws carries it, but they have an online store, I think, where you can make some purchases. I'm sure of it, because everything's online now. So you can check those out there, but. Unfortunately, my mother does not sell her chicken soup. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She could. <laughs> she could, but. It'd be a lot of work. Could you imagine? The pot would be bigger than hers. <laughs> So I think I've had enough salt hit for today. Um, I'm probably just gonna have cereal for dinner. <laughs> I'm, I'm good in that regard. This is this was more of a curiosity for us and we just decided to make a video out of it. I'm not sure if this was helpful to anybody else. But it was just fascinating to know what each types of broths and stock cubes there are and what you can get out of it, what the ingredients are and what you can use them for. Hopefully this video helped you gain some extra knowledge. Thank you for joining us. And if you enjoyed, Please subscribe, like, and hit the bell. Thank you. Bye See you bye. guys next time. Testing room tone for construction noise. Yay. I want them to hit the ground again. Thank you.